Oh, yeah, but look, though. 5 0. Huh? 5 0. You 5 0? Yeah, I got my little. 5 0, 5 0. I told you, you ain't getting the ball, never. I got you. Please join the club, baby. <laughs> you guys are in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and probably one of the most entertaining things I've seen is you mic'd up <laughs> during mm -hmm. practice. Now, did you have to censor yourself a little bit because yeah. how you were like, hey, hey, 5-0, nobody say anything. Yeah, so I first the first thing, when you're going to be in Foreman and you're going to be being 5-0, you got to <laughs> let everybody know you 5-0. <laughs> so then that tells everybody around, whatever you say, you got to keep it on the under, watch your, watch your language and all that other stuff. You got 81. It was still so funny listening to you and the way you trash talk with everybody. Hey, Five, you should tell him to stop making you run deep out so you ain't gonna get the ball. That boy Lamar Jackson be out there playing mad. He don't play football. Square. Square, square, square. <laughs> Is that typically what we would see from you in a joint practice or even a game? Oh, so I ain't never did a joint practice with Coach, so it was kind of oh. new. Uh, the first day when we went out there, the energy was like kind of up and down. We didn't know how to feel them, they didn't know how to feel us. Second day we came out there, it was just, it was just, energy was ready to go. Mm -hmm. So I think that was big for us. And then, like my teammates were saying, they was like, they've been waiting for me to start talking and stuff. Because <laughs> they so used to seeing me on the field and seeing how I interact when I was with playing with KC. So mm -hmm. it works out for us. Obviously, to be a DB, specifically a corner, you have to have a confidence and a swagger to you. Mm -hmm. When you're in the game, on the field, is that like, it's just something that you ooze, the confidence part. Is that something that you've always had? I guess I always taught to play football. You feel me? You just go out there and let everything go. Uh, you prepare through the week so that the game is easy, and then when you go out there, it don't even, it, you shouldn't be thinking. If you think, if you know, you go. So are you a talker during the game? Oh, uh, no. I, I don't know. I'll be just having my, having my fun as it comes. I like to have fun. I just internally have fun with myself, have fun with my teammates, and just make it. It's, the game is all, we've been playing this game for, for so long. We play it because we love it. So you got to enjoy it while you're out there playing it. So how much of that, you, your personality, like kind of that energy you bring comes from the Oakland in you? Me talking mess comes from my pops and, and moms and just my family in general. That's just how we get down. We gonna talk mess to each other. It's just 24 seven, nonstop. We on each other heads. Well, but that had to be uh, kind of challenging, especially with your dad being your high school coach. You can't talk back to the coach. In our house, we talk like, um, we got battles, man. <laughs> Honestly, that was my father and my, and my football coach. But you know, at the end of the day, if we don't, don't see eye to eye, we, you see, that's just a part of the relationship with coach to player, player to coach. So wait, so what was that like playing for your dad in high school? Was, I mean, he's a legend, was, you know, in, in Oakland and uh -huh. at his school. In the moment, what was it like then? See, my pops coached me when I was playing Pop Warner too. So I had an opportunity to watch him when he first got into high school ball and, and when they first won their first couple of championships and stuff and start growing. And then by the time I got there, he had a couple of championships underneath his belt. He didn't coach my older brother and older cousins and stuff when he went to my high school. My pops a West Oakland legend. He's been around Oakland, you know, forever. To see how much you've been doing for my community, doing for my high school and stuff is big. So I know you're all about beast mode. Can you tell me when you first met Marshawn Lynch? I've been knowing you my whole life. See, that's the beauty of where we come from in Oakland. Our family's been knowing each other since we was kids. You know, he's a little bit older than me, but we've been knowing each other since we was kids. How much has he supported you throughout your career? Oh, we support each other, man. Family comes first. Why is it so important to you? You do so much with your foundation and stuff in the community back in Oakland. Why did you start that and why do you keep it up? I got to do my part. Do my part for, 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 for me being African American, do my part for me being a, a person who comes from uh, underprivileged, just me doing my part for the people who, don't, who, who didn't have so much coming up, just as I did. My mom and my pops worked and they did what they did to, to make sure it ends me for me and my brothers and sisters. So I gotta do my part. Coming up on Los Angeles Ram Spotlight. You feel so fortunate to have you know, grown up in a family where my grandfather did such a great job of establishing a reputation built on hard work, treating people the right way. And you know, I, I know that I wouldn't have gotten the opportunities that I've gotten if it wasn't for the legacy that he's built. You, know, you get a chance to finish up playing in college and get right on with the Buccaneers, working under John Gruden because of the relationship that my grandfather and Jim Gruden Sr. had. And you know, all those different things you look back on and you just realize how blessed you are. And without my grandfather, there's no way I'd be in these positions.